always a reminder for myself and abdika la jisu, da'ifu, miskeen, zalim, mujahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. Alhamdulillah we took a path of nothingness in which Allah is uh, continuously testing the servant and emptying them of every badness and bad character by means of testing and crushing. And alhamdulillah that Allah give a remedy and relief in the world of light, that to connect into the world of light as the world of form begins its crushing, then the believer is to retreat within the world of light to receive Allah's Divinely grace and rahmah within the cave of mercy. That was clearly described by Allah in Surat Al Kahf, in which she described that when oppression has taken the earth, that run to the cave so that Allah perchance can dress the servant from these oceans of rahmah and mercy. And in this holy month of the secrets of Surat Al Yaseen, which is the ninth from the power of nine to the fourth lunar month opens the secret of this passageway of awliyaullah. They go through the twelve hijabs of Holy Qur'an. The first surah is Surat 9 Surah, Surat Tawbah, then Surat Al-Kahf, then Surat Al-Nam which is the kingdom and 27 and on the fourth month they enter into Surat Al-Yaseen which is heart of Holy Qur'an which is the name of Sayyidina Muhammad And we described last night that this is a journey to Allah through the ways of marifa, which means Gnosticism, the ways of knowing. There's a way from kindergarten that they believe they're approaching and alhamdulillah Allah writes for that for 90-99% of people. Those whom are of a khawas, they are of guides in which Allah wants to lead them towards the real love and real guidance and the immensity of these realities and that is a guidance to what Allah loves. In the holy hadith of Allah I'm a hidden treasure wanting to be known and the emphasis. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is on hidden. So it means that if you think that you merely just get a ticket, you go to Mecca, therefore I found Allah But the hadith is, is directing us that it's a bit more complex and it requires a heart that's sincere, that's humble, that has a, a love and humility that merely coming to Allah is that you left idolatry. You left the many gods and you came to one, Qul Hu Allah Hu Ahad. So merely you came to the oneness of the Creator but you yet didn't reach to the realities in which Allah has for the servant, means they merely accepted Islam, that come to the oneness of the Divine, leave the many and multiple and come to the oneness. And the path of Arifin and Gnosticism means that they came through the disciplining their form and they continuously discipline the form for if a wild form can't take you in any direction. So it means like a beast, if you don't train it and discipline it there's no way to ride the beast. 
So those whom choose not to discipline their form and they say they're just going to do spiritual, it's a lie. Because when your beast is wild there's no way to sit on it to perform anything. You're basically taking a ride on a wild beast and we know where that can go in every direction. Islam comes to tame the beast. The beast is the human, you see them on television how beastly they are and the characteristics of wildness that they can do and, and the evilness that they can convey. You look at the wickedness of character so then you understand the physicality is truly a beast without discipline. They come to Islam to discipline their physicality but they yet didn't arrive, they just merely began the ride. Once the beast has been put into the disciplines of Islam and they follow the pillars of Islam and they, they follow what Prophet brought for their pillars of Islam, means now they have to enter a path of faith and iman and iman are principles, those things which are not tangible, those that require belief. And belief is the equivalence of belief equals love. Those whom are devoid of love, love is a gift from the Divine. If they're devoid of love, they're devoid of belief. That when Allah want to grant a servant belief and iman, it has to be a Divine muhib and muhabbat and ishq and love. All these words are a gift from the Divine that I have to grant you a love and as a result of love within your heart deposited by the Divine means that you have an empathy, you have a softness, you have a compassion for all of God's creation. As a result of that compassion your heart is now capable of entering into the oceans of belief in which you believe in, in, in the Divine, you div believe in the angels, you believe in the holy books, you believe in, in destiny, you believe in the Day of Judgment, you believe in the messengers of Allah means that that five pillars and six principles open the secret of oneness. And that's maqam al ihsan when you ocean into oneness in which you feel the oneness of the Divine and that Divine is continuously observing the servant. They feel the observation of the Divine, they feel the love and the grace of the Divine and every guidance is coming from that reality. So it means that this is a, a path in which to open the heart and open towards these realities. Not everyone is at every level. No matter what the claim of the title, whatever people claim doesn't mean that all have the same spiritual insight, the same spiritual stations nor at all the same spiritual knowledges. Allah gave no two servants the same knowledge because Allah is generous and doesn't need to recycle. What Allah gives to a servant, He's given to no other servant. What He gives to another servant, given to no other servant. Everyone has their unique portion set aside for them. And when Allah want to dress the servant from Divinely Love, they seek out only their portion. So it means like the sunnah of eating and why every sunnah has an immense reality. The sunnah and the Islamic way set by Prophet to eat. So imagine those whom are eating from Allah's table. If Prophet is describing the sunnah of how to eat in a Muslim organization, in a Muslim surrounding is they'll bring a tray with a whole bunch of food on the tray for a group of men. And the barakah for each person is only what's within their reach. So whatever is in your area you eat from it, Allah put your blessing in that portion. But the eyes of people and the wildness of character, they want somebody else's portion. So they want to reach over and take somebody else's portion or maybe switch the tray so that they can take that portion. And what Prophet taught in this way of eating and the mannerism is that you can only give from what you have and whom Allah gives, He gives. 
if you didn't give to someone else then there's no need to try to extinguish the light of that person, diminish that person or try to shift the plate into your direction, into your favour. So means each of the shaykhs they have a different knowledge and whom Allah gives He gives. Why He gave is in Allah's command. So means the path is not the same. The assumption that, oh every shaykh has this knowledge and every shaykh will teach me this and every shaykh… No, it's, it's completely incorrect. This table that Allah has set, He has proportioned and especially at Allah's table what's in front of them is theirs. Nobody can come and try to take it and put it onto theirs and nobody can spin the plate to say, no you're, you're no longer to have that. Although they may try with their earthly form and, and earthly lips and earthly character, but the adab that Prophet has sent is an adab of the heavens. So what they give to people is from what Allah is serving to them. As a result the knowledges may cause jealousy, may cause disturbances and, and difficulties amongst people and that was what we taught in Surat Al-Kahf. When Sayyidina Musa salam, who's one who talks to Allah So anyone thinks whatever station they have, however high they think they are, Allah is giving them a test in humility. That, Ya Kaleemullah I'll send you to just one of my students who attained the mercy and we taught him. We taught him ilm al laduni, knowledges of the heavens. So then Sayyidina Musa went and the first thing that Sayyidina Khidr teaches is, me and you were going to have difficulty because I'm going to start teaching from what I know and from what little you may know on that subject you're going to negate it and you're going to have difficulties and you're going to cause problems. This was an adab and a, and a lesson from the heavens. So if anyone sees fitna on the earth and confusion upon the earth, Allah described it in Surat Al-Kahf, this is even a, a fitna between Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr thinking that, I'm very high, I know everything and uh, what you're about to teach Sayyidina Khidr gives a warning that from what little you know on these subjects I'm about to take you through, me and you are going to have a difficulty because you're going to try to question everything and you can't question. Because this is a way of contemplation and this is a way of whatever Allah has proportioned for the believers. So there's no believer come back and say, no this not it, this not existing, this is, is not something. If they don't know it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, it means they never came to that ocean yet or maybe they're not proportioned for that ocean. So it means the tariqah and the uloom in which Allah gives. That's why the tariqah comes and teaches manners, that have manners. That on things you don't know better to stay quiet than to negate things and negate haqqaiqs. If you don't know say, I don't know or stay silent on that subject. That's why the tariqah comes to teach these knowledges and teach these adabs and mannerisms. So it means that all those oceans of, of, of knowledges and realities they're beyond comprehension. That at every moment Allah upon every knowledge has a new level of knowledge, new level of reality. And in this way of seeking the love for Allah we're teaching how intricate this system is. It's not simply you went to Mecca, you understood. So anyone who's learned from us, no, you merely went to Mecca. Later when you study from the shaykh you find out, oh there's a greater secret in Medina and that's the meaning I was a hidden treasure. For the masses they think they arrived at the secret in Mecca, that's 99.9% .9 of the people and that's about 90% of the packages that's what they focus on. Tariqah and, and certain shaykhs of tariqah, not all, we try to speak with the adab generalizing but the shaykh whom is teaching you knows the greater seeker is in Medina. And that's the secret of Siratul Lam Jalala, 
the secret of Lam Alif in which the reality is switched. And if they enter into Medina to Munawwara, Allah begin to describe for the servant, Mecca is what you built. Humans built the Kaaba, put the stones together and took one stone from paradise to represent the realities of paradise. But the one whom is lying in Medina, what Allah describes, I created him from my form, from my shaykh, I blew onto him from my spirit that his light from my divinely oceans and he's been taught by someone who is shadeed in quwwah, who's immense in power. All these descriptions Allah is given to the body that's lying in Medina to Munawwara, the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad So means it's not so simple, maybe less than 1% understand that reality and less than 1% of 1% have permission to describe that reality. So tariqah is not all the same where everybody thinks they're just going and every, every ice cream shop is the same and everyone has all the same flavors and that's what they dish out when they, when they give their badges for tariqah. But it's very unique, very unique. They describe the shaykhs like stones and gems and each stone is uniquely different based on what Allah has given to it and its purpose in the last days. So they have a different purpose and a different reality. Means then this teaching very unique and how to reach towards the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, how to reach to the immense reality and the ishq and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And by doing so it's the immense ocean of marifatullah in which Allah will be found Allah will be found in this heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Neither the earth nor the heavens can contain me. So sit meditate tonight, the shaykh is giving Hadith al-Qudsi and the Wahhabis attack Hadith al-Qudsi which in the rank of Holy Qur'an that if Allah would say that Below the rank of Qur'an are the sayings and hadiths that are Qudsi, that are very holy. They are like, like an extension of holy Qur'an but it's a hadith of Prophet In hadith al-Qudsi Allah is describing, neither the heavens nor the earth can contain me. So you sit and meditate, what does that mean? Then where can you go in the heavens that like a movie, you open a gate, you start walking and seated upon a chair, God forbid, is Allah's presence, Astaghfirullah. When we talk about the might and majesty of the Divine is a spatial area capable of holding Allah? Because when I come into my house the foundation of the house has to be strong. Imagine if I was a thousand pounds and I go upstairs and the floor of my bedroom collapses because it has to hold me. So what, what structure can I build that holds me? I've seen like very big people that sit in a small chair and boom in one second it collapses. Means that the chair has to be fortified for your strength and weight. So to assume Allah's in the heavens where? And what part of heavens can hold Allah and why would Allah have a form and a direction in which to have a proximity? So ulama and all Ahlul Sunnah said, don't even go there because now you're anthropomorphizing, you're, you're bringing in like a statue of a, of a form of God which God has no form, no direction, no location, nothing can contain it. So there is no place where Allah can occupy, you enter and you go. So then that became clear with ulama. And then on earth, is there a building that you go to and that Allah's there? No, Kaaba definitely no. Allah's not in the, in the holy Kaaba 
But the souls of those whom love Allah is in that proximity. As a result their hearts bring the love of Allah into that proximity. So it means not in heaven and not on earth can contain our Lord Allah might and majesty because now Dajjal coming and saying he is God and his cousins and friends are saying we believe in a human God. And Islam is the only religion on this earth, the only religion on this earth at this time and at all times and is the only religion on this earth, Allah has no form, Allah has no direction, no location, no shaykh, no likeness, nothing in the greatness and the might and majesty of the Divine the Presence, so nothing. Then Allah gives in that holy hadith that neither the heavens and earth can contain me but my believers can contain me. Because we carry the torch and the light of the Divine through our love and as a result He gave a, a vessel and a vehicle that no creation has. You know the, the animal and animal kingdoms they have love. They have an ishq, they submit to what Allah wants but they cannot meditate into their heart, leave their form and enter into Divinely Presence and Divinely Kingdom. That's a gift they did not receive. But when Allah is, is teaching, وَلَكَ كَرَانَ بَانِي Adam, I gave you a ship. In this form of yours I gave you a ship. And I can be and my love can be put into that location which is your qalb. And they would make like like uh, spaceships in the past and describe them muraqaba, markaba. It's the reality of the heart that through the reality of the heart you can traverse the seven heavens and through the reality of the heart you can find through your love and good character the love of the Divinely Presence, feel the love of the Divinely Presence and as a result with love because it's the strongest bond you can traverse the heavens into that Divinely Kingdom and Divinely Presence. So Allah gave us a vehicle in which to do that by directing us that it's not a place I'm going to be sitting where you find me. There's nowhere on earth you're going to find, you find the signs of me, you can find the signs of Allah at the ocean. You can see it in, a, in, in the forest, you can see it in the beatific flowers and the beatific creatures. And you should see the signs of, of Allah everywhere but the one encased with Divinely love finds Allah just within the tears and the emotions that they have. Because when Allah occupies their heart Allah is the one who gives them all their senses, every tear they shed, every laughter they have, every emotion that they're feeling. For ashiqeen they feel the Divine embrace embracing them. Now how they achieve that was by following the most beloved of Allah Which Prophet are we going to follow? The one whom has no blemish, the one whom was created for us to find Allah The one whom his book is encompassing all books. The one in whom his book is the only encrypted book on all universes. Every other book is according to someone else, is manipulated by someone else. Holy Qur'an is blockchained by a billion or so hafiz who are called guardians. As a result they learn the word of Allah their hearts are guardians for the word of Allah and anyone who tries to manipulate these words there's another billion that say, no that person's wrong, they added something. Only holy book that blocked by Divine that is, is locked on a Divine blockchain and not been manipulated and guarded and sanctified through the heart of servants of Allah and that we call them the guardians, hafiz, and they guard the book of Allah Means the immensity of these realities to reach towards this love and to reach towards this ishq 
and whom Allah gave that created the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad like a portal for us on earth. In the Divinely Presence that reality is Nabi Ahmad In the midpoint of this reality is Nabi Mahmud These names of Prophet are for what people understand and we speak a language for our sci-fi community because I'm not broadcasting into Arab countries where they're expecting traditional Arab words and Arabic words. Although they may be listening, we have people from Dubai and, and uh, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and many other Arab countries. But the, the audience is clearly not that, the audience are for a younger generation whom are familiar with tech and sci-fi and all these realities to bring it back to everyday understanding. That every name of Prophet is a portal. The portal on earth is Mimha Mim Dal Muhammad. As soon as you say it, that portal opens for this presence and this reality. Where Allah said, can't be found on this earth and this on in heavens or on earth. But as soon as you mention these names, the portal that takes you to the presence of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah means the most powerful and highest portals that anyone can reach. You can't say any other Prophet because they're saying that represents God Himself, those names of those people which is a big mushrik, big partnership with Allah. Allah cursed the one who make a partner with Himself. So that's not a door that's going to take anyone anywhere, as soon as you say that you're in big trouble. But when you say Muhammad that portal of Prophet opens to reach now into this reality. And what Allah said, will mention in your fajr Mahmud so that you can reach to Maqam al-Mahmud, why? Because there's a name of Prophet that is like a in between the earth and the highest heavens. And at Fajr time, Maqam al Mahmud, the station of Sayyidina Mahmud is brought and is described by Allah like stepping down, means it's like a rope that comes for a salvation for the community. That between Muhammad and Nabi Ahmad Allah made an easy opening at Fajr time for Sayyidina Mahmud And as soon as we pray Salat al-Fajr that's the station in which Prophet is opening that reality and the believers as soon as they enter into their Fajr they do their Fajr awrads, the cool azan for Fajr. Maqam al-Mahmud is opening, means the presence of Prophet is opening. People say, how you know? Well because the shaykhs are not dead. The shaykhs were taken into seclusions reaching their states of death in which their seclusion was all with the open eye of their heart. When they prayed they saw the direction in which they pray. They saw who's in the presence of where they're praying, they saw in the world of light all the lights and the reality of their salah. They're not like dead people just faking something on the physical earth. They witness with their heart, they pray with their heart, they witness the presence, they see the lights in that presence and they see what they have to see of that reality. As a result they speak from yaqeen, yaqeen in which the shaykhs open for them. Who opened? Maulana shaykh open, Shaykh Nazim open, Shaykh Dagestani open, and nine great shaykhs of Naqshbandiyat al Aliyah sat in that circle and opened those realities for this shaykh. As a result, they witness what they needed to witness and they speak with certainty. And as a result of that certainty, Allah allows them that come back to the earth and now guide towards that reality. So every name that they mention these are portals into that Divinely Presence. As a result of entering into the reality of Muhammad you're entering now in deep, deep proximity to the Presence of Allah 
through the portal and through the light of Prophet That's the immense reality and those who've followed along with us for all these years they understand that when Allah gave the title of Rasul Allah, what do you have? Ra, Su, the secret and wow, La, La, the Lamb. And what's upon the Lamb is Allah, Alif, Lamb, Lamb, Hay. So, R, the Ra, because I don't have it written in front of me, that we have to come to the highest authority. That Ra is the rububiyah and the lordship of this reality of Sayyidina Muhammad. Su means that he has the seen and the secret, the one whom contains this secret of Allah So Rasul is not just something we say. When Prophet described Hadith al-Jabbar, he's describing, I was a Rasulullah, that the Allah created my, my lordship when He made a rock. And that in, in my lordship, in my, ta- in my title, Allah put the scene. And it means every secret of light and every light of every secret is in there. And Allah attached a wow to my scene and gave me that I have the secret of Divinely love and that I was created by this Divinely love because Allah is love and Allah is a secret wanting to be known, not known, wanting to be known. And then Allah created my lamb, through my tongue all creations will come into existence by the power and might of Allah and upon my tongue is Alif, Lam, Lam, Hay. Means what? You can't get to Allah until you come to the Rabb, the one who is the Lord of the heavens. Until you enter into His secret, until you enter into His ishq and wadood and love and only through His tongue will we begin to even understand and know and reach into the oceans of Allah Means that this is through the world of light, this is the immense realities of the world of light. And the dhikr of Rasulullah is the only power that Allah is, is, is mentioning. The immensity, you have to meditate on these things, you're not going to understand it. Ninety percent of the people watching tonight don't, not going to understand it. You're going to take this episode and keep meditating to it, keep meditating to it. With that, Rasul Allah means then it's the Rasul that make the dhikr of Allah in all realities, in all haqqaiqs. And until you enter into Rasul, whatever you're saying of Allah's imitation, if you enter into the light of the Rasul, what happens? If you're in that light, you're in that wujud, you're in that reality, at that time every dhikr of Allah is real. And that's why the dhikr of Sayyidina Muhammad, for, for Sayyidina Muhammad to mention Allah but in the dress of Rasul is real. But Allah then give us a zikr in which you're not going to get that. So you imitate me, my zikr is, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Because you can't reach the reality until you're in the dress of the Rasul. You won't reach to Allah because Allah is hidden within the Rasul. So when you come to Allah and say, Ya Rabbi what is the zikr I should recite in Allahi wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala nabi, Ya yuhalladhina amanu, yusalluna ala nabi, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So Allah is like a fusion, is directing us that praise upon Prophet so that one day you reach this reality in which your love and your essence is flowing within the Rasul. You even see the inscription upon your heart change and Allah put the inscription of your heart to say, Rasul, 
because you're carrying, you would be with whom you love, you carry a heart from Rasul in which it beats Allah, Allah, Allah. That's the real, not the imitated. So people whom are in the imitated, when you talk to them like the inhabitants of the prison who are focusing on shadows, they're like, what the heck are you talking about? Come and interpret shadows for us. Say, no I've seen the light man, what are you talking about shadows? You people crazy? Let me tell you about the light. No, no, we're gonna kill you. Talk about shadows. How can I talk about shadows? And that's why people post that they're angry. That's why people post that, what is this? Just stick with the shadow talk. I don't know the shadow talk because I was taken into the light and my job is to come back and teach about it. But remember the, the qasa that we said, those who are in the prison their only interest is talking about shadows. They haven't seen the light, they don't want to talk about that light and when somebody else talks about it they want to get their chain and put it on their neck and, 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 and suffocate the person, don't talk anymore about this because we can't, we don't understand it or whatever the reasoning is. But these are immense realities. If anybody pick that up to understand that the two how they're guiding us, the Prophet says, come to Allah for oneness. Now you're correct, don't say multiple. Then he shifts you to Allah and Allah says, Inna Allahi wa malaikatuhu means praise upon your Prophet. And then you begin to turn back to Prophet salawat, 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 salawat until you love him more than you love yourself means the light of Rasul is dressing you. Now say, Allah and that's real because I'm not in heaven and I'm not on earth. I'm in that heart that you just said, Allah and that's the real zikr of Allah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.